what's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On a Couch Talking Sports Social Distancing Edition. As always, <laughs> I'm Robbie, joined virtually by Kyle. Kyle, how are you, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm uh, sitting in the dining room. I figured a little change of scenery would be pretty nice. So <laughs> yeah, it looks very, it's a very nice dining room, very nice window you got there behind you. It's it's perfect. Uh, yeah, and so yeah, there you go. Uh, hopefully no ghosts or, you know, no people just randomly show up at your window during sh filming, you know, that'd be kind of awkward, <laughs> but, <laughs> and, um, tonight we actually have joining us a special guest, someone that you know, uh, if you've watched our show before, it is my sister Sarah is joining us. Welcome back, Sarah. Hello, thank you for having me, and by that I mean thank you for allowing me to force my way on tonight's episode. <laughs> That's all right. No, we're ha we're happy to have you. It was it was a very uh, very happy forcing. Um, so. For tonight's episode, what we wanted to do, and we kind of teased this in the last episode, was we wanted to sort of take a look back at some, since there are no sports going on right now, unfortunately, we might kind of take a look back at some teams and years that really stand out throughout the, throughout the history of sports and the recent history of sports. And what better way to begin that by going back to when we first started on a couch talking sports if you guys remember back to our very first episode we talked about the recently anointed world champion 2013 boston red sox so we wanted to sort of bring that season back into the light and sort of discuss uh the 2013 red sox and their world championship before i get it right into the the Red Sox team in general, the, the first thing I kind of want to touch on is 2013 was quite a year in Boston and sort of the Boston sports scene. And Sarah, I kind of want to start with you, you know, in terms of, you know, there was a, obviously a very big and, you know, very tragic event that took place, you know, early on in 2013, the Boston Marathon um, explosion. Since you're our special guest, I want to sort of lead off, no pun intended, with you and sort of ask what what are your memories from sort of that particular incident and also just sort of uh just in general how did you feel kind of sports you know sort of transformed or sort of helped aid in the in the recovery from that yeah um well I was like 15 in 2013 or 16 in 2013 and I like didn't like sports then <laughs> um <laughs> Which is funny because now I work for a major league baseball team. Yeah. Um, by the way, we need to point out that Sarah works for the Baltimore Orioles, even though she's wearing a Red Sox shirt. Don't worry, nobody from the Orioles is going to be watching this, so it's okay. <laughs> but <laughs> by the way, continue. My, my bosses are watching. Hey guys, they're not. But just in case this blows up. Um, but yeah, I like wasn't too into sports back in the day, um, and I think that sports now are super important to me and our way of, of unifying people. And that's something that we at the Orioles have been really insistent on, you know, like making sure that our baseball community across the team, but also across major league baseball is really close. And I feel like rallying around the tragedy. Um, it's super nice to have, have people there that, uh, are going through the same thing that you are. So I think that sports, it's always more than just sports. And I know that a lot of people that aren't into sports don't feel that way, but I think that sports are an important way to bring a community together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they definitely brought Boston together uh, in 2013 and sort of the post bombing effect. And Kyle is sort of going sort of to you, you know, what are, what are your just when you think back to that year and sort of that event and how sports and in this particular case the Red Sox sort of transcended things post um, post that event. Uh, so what what goes through your mind, Kyle? Um, yeah, wow, that was that, that was pretty. Uh, just the event in general was pretty crazy. Uh, I remember uh, when it first happened. I was actually I heard all the news while I was at work, and I was uh, this was back when I was a toddler teacher, so. I was kind of fearful for my uh, two-year-old at the time. So was, this is back when I worked in um, my old school building, which doesn't, doesn't actually exist the way it does now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We actually uh, 
fun fact, they tore it down and then they, they, they put up a public school there. So I used wow. to work at a, a private school there, but, um, so, uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it's funny, like how much changed since then actually, you know, I think about it just in general, but going back to that specific event though, I remember hearing that whole story and just, you know, look, you know, look at my co-teachers and be like, Oh, okay. Oh, that's kind of scary. <laughs> But no, it's it's been. I think it really has. Um, it's it's been an event. It's been a really traumatic event for a lot of people. I can imagine. But I think it's also shaped us in a as as a pretty strong, yeah, as, as a pretty strong as a pretty strong nation actually. So yeah, Boston strong. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Not to get too far off track here, but Kyle and I, I remember we actually hung out that evening. You know, right after the the bombings, and it was definitely quite the quite the tough event to sort of comprehend what had just happened, especially in our own, in our own home state and home city there. Um, and the Red Sox definitely had a large part in sort of unifying the city. Um, that 2013 Red Sox team really sort of ran with that whole Boston strong mentality. And even like the weekend, you know, the weekend after when they had caught the suspects and stuff like that, David Ortiz had the "This is our bleeping city" um, mm. sort of you know rallying cry that that weekend, and uh, it was just quite the moment, quite the the sort of healing moment in Boston sports. Uh, but sorry, getting to the 2013 Red Sox in general, Kyle, I'll start with you in this situation the 2013 Red Sox team had quite a season they finished 97 65 overall best record in Major League Baseball and defeated Tampa Bay uh, in the ALDS defeated Detroit in the ALCS and then defeated the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series so just sort of take us back Kyle through you know again because that was sort of right around the time we started doing this I know we sort of talked about it a lot mm -hmm. during that type. So, sir, just take us through from your perspective, sir, that year for the Red Sox and that ability to, you know, really capture that Boston strong and turn it into a World Series championship. Yeah, no, that was that was such a great moment. You know, that was um, that was the third time I've personally witnessed a, a World Championship uh, or a World, sorry, a World Series uh, win by the Sox. So that was that was that was pretty great overall. Uh, yeah, I think it just brought a really positive feeling among everyone. You know, when, once they saw that, once they saw the whole season go down, and just just that that whole series of, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, and Sarah, I know you weren't really following the Sox too closely at that time, but what just sort of do you remember about that whole World Series run and sort of looking back on now as the big baseball fan that you are? What are your sort of reflections about it, if any? Yeah, um, I, like, don't know anything about that season. I <laughs> didn't even know that they won the World Series that year. Um, or but, you did remember the Ortiz Grand Slam game, you know, the, the cop yeah. in the bullpen raising his hands up, which yeah. I was at, by the way, not to, not to you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going to continue. Yeah, and I think that uh, sports, I think, are – you know, especially in that year, a really good way of unifying people, as I said. And I think that it was super great to have a team that kind of pulled through with, with the big dub um, <laughs> to kind of pull everyone through that time in our lives and Bostonians' lives. But yeah, uh, 2013 was a really long time ago for me. <laughs> um, and I was really busy with trying to like pass driver's ed so um, <laughs> yeah no definitely and uh it's kind of interesting just sort of between the boston strong and the beards and you know sort of all those different things it was like i said it was a pretty pretty wild season and uh i mean again their third world series they now added one obviously in 2018 but it was also ended up being the last world series for david ortiz and uh, obviously we all know what legendary status he left on boston yeah you got your your david ortiz red sox jersey on and uh number 34 and i mean he you know he was just again that whole that was sort of the embodiment of what that team meant, sort of that whole speech he gave again. I mean, it's just something that is played over and over again 
you know, just you know, now seven years later. I mean, this is our bleeping city, and you know, people still go to that, and it's pretty, it's pretty um, crazy stuff. And like I said, just how fitting that they won it all after everything that happened. Um, yeah, Sarah, I know. Uh, again, sort of the David or just to get into David Ortiz. I know it's going to get a little bit off topic here but you know since we don't have you on all that often you're wearing the Ortiz stuff what I think we've really talked about this on your appearance for what what are some of your favorite just overall memories uh of David Ortiz and his legendary career with the Red Sox when I got to meet him yes <laughs> might have been, I don't know if it was that same no I guess it would have been like the year after yeah I think it was a year yeah I think it was that next year yeah driving classes and drove by him in Wellesley <laughs> stopped and took a picture and that was super cool um he's a gigantic human being um but yeah uh we saw both his last regular season game and his last postseason game um yeah yeah we well, saw I, both I love that he has just become like I mean, I guess the the name Big Poppy is fitting because I love that he has just become like the team dad right, right <laughs> now. And like he's like he like went to spring training and is giving everyone advice and just like being the dad to everyone and is still super involved with the team. And I really love that because just like I love that he's just like I am all of your, your guys' father and here for <laughs> advice, especially to like younger players like like Rafi. I think it's very very wholesome content. Yeah, definitely. And Kyle, I mean, I'll, I'll throw it to you as well. We might as well just sort of, you know, have a broader discussion here. Sort of, you know, when you think back again, you know, a lot of that team in that season was, you know, in large, no large part due to David Ortiz. And again, you know, the Grand Slam game, the speech, all that. So, you know, just give us sort of your overall, uh, again, I don't know we've really talked about this a whole bunch on this show, but give us sort of your overall perspective on the career that was for David Ortiz I mean that the man's a legend I mean I think Sarah really said it the best to be honest uh, there's really nothing much more I can say um I mean like he's amazing like you're right I I, I um he really shaped up the team uh for the you know the time he's been on uh on the Red Sox so yeah no I, I think he's he's really led a great example for not just like Red Sox, but also Boston teams in general, you know, how, how much influence you can have. And, you know, it, it's all been positive on his end. So it's just, yeah, no, I, uh, yep. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, Sarah, we always, you know, appreciate having you on. Any final thoughts, Sarah, before we, uh, we start to wrap up here? No, I just love Large Father. <laughs> <laughs> really great. He's a legend. Um, has done a lot for the team and, and has been with the Red Sox both like as a player and as a mentor for a very long time. And I think that that's super great. And I know that he recently had like an estate sale and people were trying to buy his waffle maker and stuff like that. <laughs> so I think that he's just beloved in, in Massachusetts as well. Um, for being such a amazing person, um, both inside and outside of baseball as well. Awesome. Well, before we sort of get to our end credits, you know, obviously, Sarah, thank you so much again for joining us. And, uh, you know, we'll hope to hope to talk to you soon. Also, yeah, the fact that he almost died, I feel like we didn't talk yeah. True. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I was trying to make it more positive because you know, we were talking about the marathon bombing and that was already kind of depressing enough. But yeah, yeah, glad Dan Ortiz is still yeah, alive. Yeah, like, super happy he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you. A bit. Thank, yeah, well, thank you, Sarah. And uh, yeah, go... I can't really say go Orioles. I'm sorry. I just, I, I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> I am Thanks contractually for... obligated by rules of my job to support them as a team. But... Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Sarah. And uh, well, again, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, Thanks for stopping by. Yes, I'm about to leave this Zoom meeting. Farewell, friend. <laughs> All right. Bye, Sarah. Thank you again. And uh, Kyle. Now that uh, we are now going to kind of 
transition here to the end portion of our episode here. Uh, and we're going to go to, you know, another favorite segment that has <laughs> popped onto the show in recent memory, and that is the Sue's Reviews. So what do you got for us this week? All right, so uh, this week, um, oh, man, you know, I'm, I haven't even, like, <laughs> I haven't really prepared a specific review for this. Uh, I think what I'll do, let me think. Uh, I got to think of all the stuff I've watched and um, played this week. Uh, wow. Usually I, I, have a, I have a review, but I, I, I came up a little bit short, I believe. But, um, you know, okay, I'll start off with this one. Um, just a short review. I wanted to review this um, – show i actually just started watching um it's called tales from the loop uh, you can find it on amazon prime it's an amazon original show and um it's a pretty very it's a very interesting show because um it, it is based on um on it's it's based on an artist i can't think of the artist right now i have to look it up but uh it's based on some of his paintings that he's done so uh, what what the um, what the filmmakers for that show did were uh, every episode is its own short story in this kind of like overarching universe and it's very cool it's very mind bending uh, and I don't want to get too much into the plot for this one because kind of like um, the last uh, the Netflix show I was telling about Russian Doll it's kind of good to go in, into this episode into this series without knowing too much um, it's a very like kind of reality versus like what what is reality. It's got a, kind of got this like sci-fi theme going too for it, and it's very good. Um, the actors are are very solid. They have Rebecca Hall, Jonathan Price, um, <clears throat> both playing a. a, a um, so he's 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 basically her her father, and sh and she's kind of the scientist that's kind of like kind of discovering more aspects about life and. It's it's very it's 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 a very just a very intriguing show so far. Um, I think it had a very strong first episode, um, and there are a lot of really crazy twists and turns going on. And um, I highly recommend watching it. Is it just it literally just came out? Um, so I'll uh, I'll probably maybe follow it up um, once I finish the season. Um, um, in on the maybe on a future segment of the scissor review. So. Yeah, but if you're looking for a pretty cool, mind-bending reality type of show with with a with some sci-fi elements, then definitely check that one out. So, <laughs> cool, cool. No, I definitely <laughs> look forward to hearing more about it um, down the road. Um, but for for my final thought tonight, it's kind of interesting. You know, we kind of brought up how sports you know can really unify us and and dark times and even though it's interesting because even though there aren't any sports going on right now obviously i still feel like sports in a way are kind of unifying us and sort of bringing us together and sort of providing that calming aspect whether it be players coaches broadcasters you know posting video messages to to people and sort of telling them to stay strong and you're all going to get through this and all that to even just, you know, stations showing, um, you know, games of the past, you know, people sort of being able to, you know, in these tough times relive, you know, brighter moments from the past, you know, Super Bowl wins or World Series wins, NCAA championships, whatever the case may be. And, you know, I think it also has kind of shown how much we kind of take sports for granted. I feel like at times and things like that now, like that we've sort of had taken away from us, at least for the time being, I think that hopefully now maybe as a country, we can kind of come to really appreciate what we have more in terms, especially on the sports front when it comes back and sort of, you know, enjoy it more and, you know, not really take it for granted as much because, you know, some stuff like this can happen and, you know, it can get taken away just, just like that in the blink of an eye. And so I think we just have to sort of really take a step back and realize, you know, how fortunate we are to be able to have sports, to be able to have certain things in our lives. And, uh, you know, it's been a real wake up call for a lot of people. And um, I think the, the sports has sort of found that way still again, despite all that's happened and sports being offline to be able to, sort of unify us even if it's not through direct competition and you know teams i know bob Kraft, you know brought a, like a million masks back for both the boss area and for new york 
um, again, sort of sports, you know, is, is a great unifier. And I think we've really seen that. And I think that's pretty, a pretty awesome thing. So, uh, nice. you know, uh, yeah, I think it's, I, I like the unification, even if it's not through, again, direct sports, which hopefully we'll be back soon. Yeah. Um, so that is going to do it for another edition of On a Couch Talking Sports. I want to thank Sarah for joining us. Uh, always yeah, fun to have you. her on. And as always, for Kyle and Robbie, I mean, well, I'm Robbie, obviously, for Kyle and myself, <laughs> Robbie, uh, we'll see you next time on On a Couch Talking Sports. Bye, everybody. <laughs>